Whakarei Urewa Forest is a very special place in Rotorua, especially so for the Te Arawa iwi and the local community. Tourists come to New Zealand to experience its glory. Children are everywhere and dogs are let loose to roam. Unfortunately over the years, this forest has become infested by wallabies. This is a growing problem as they eat small shoots near the ground which prevents newer trees from growing up to replace old ones. These trees provide food sources for many of our native birds. Poisons and shooting are not options for killing these wallabies because um, poisons like 1080 pose a threat to dogs and children in the area as well as birds and shooting is not okay because there's lots of people around in the forest. But if we do not do something soon, this problem in Rotorua could extend nationally. One idea of solving this problem seemed to stick out to me more than any of my other solutions. It was a humane trap that would only kill wallabies. After some planning, I decided to use a door system. If a wallaby was nearby, a door would open, allowing the wallaby to enter a box. Inside the box would be a good nature trap. What I needed now was a way to detect a wallaby. I realised a solid option to do this would be to use artificial intelligence. I did a bit of research about AI and found this thing called Roboflow. Roboflow is a website for making AI models. I made my first model using Roboflow, but unfortunately it was not very accurate. For my second model I used TensorFlow. TensorFlow was way too complicated. It made Roboflow seem easy. After 51 days of hard work, I managed to make a model. As you can see, it was a complete failure. I accidentally trained a model in Roboflow when I was annotating images for TensorFlow. This resulted in an average model. I then tried Roboflow again and to my amazement made a pretty decent model. Now that I had a model, I needed a way to run it. Thankfully, Roboflow supplied a piece of code to use. With a bit of modifying and a lot of trials and testing and hundreds of error messages, I had a file that could run the model and tell the Arduino to turn a servo. It took me 24 days because it was so complicated. Here is my finished hardware for my AI trap. Here is a webcam. This sends a feed to the computer. Here is my modified good nature trap to kill the wallaby. Here is my mesh to allow the scent of the lure to escape. Uh, here is a servo. This opens the door. Here is an Arduino. This tells the servo when to open the door. Here is a USB type A adapter. This allows me to connect all my electronics to the computer. Here's the computer that um, runs my AI model. And here is a phone that allows the computer to access the internet. Here is Velcro to allow the trap to have an adjustable fit to the tree. And here is sponge to add friction and allow for a better fit for the trap to the tree. Here I've got a container. And this is the lure for the wallaby, which screws on here. Here I've got the full trap running. So I've got a webcam here that sends a feed to the computer. And on the computer I've got my AI model with Roboflow um, looking for a wallaby. And if it detects a wallaby, it sends a serial message to the Arduino that's controlling a servo. So if I give you a demo here, I've got an image of a wallaby. If I put it in front of the webcam, the, the door opens, which is the servo turning. The servo will stay open for 30 seconds, because that is just the right amount of time for a wallaby to enter the trap. After 30 seconds, the, um, the servo will then close, closing the door, so no wildlife gets in. The trap is automatic, meaning it can reload 24 times before needing to be refilled. People need my trap to protect our native wildlife. Placing the trap along an established wallaby feeding route will rapidly reduce the number of wallabies in Whakarewarewa Forest. My trap will not harm any children, dogs, or protected animals, so it is the best choice for trapping in our forest. In the future, I will run all my electronics on a Raspberry Pi. As you can see, it is a lot smaller than a computer. It has no display, making it more energy efficient. Using a Raspberry Pi would allow me to make my traps more affordable and run on less power. They would also be more weather resistant as the Raspberry Pi has its own waterproof case.